Hello guys, welcome to TPW Talking Pro Wrestling, and wow, just wow. Ooh, a lot happened this time for AEW's uh, Quake by the Lake. Um, it's good to see, um, too, because there was a major return that happened. Uh, there was a few other things that happened too. Um, this this is gonna be a, a long one. I'm guessing. I'm not sure, but we'll be doing uh here. We'll be doing Impact Wrestling predictions, uh, and then we will be doing AEW Rampage predictions as well. And that that'll be it. That'll be the end of. Uh, this episode. Starting off first with the Dynamite results. The first matchup happened was the coffin match between Brody King and Darby Allen. I predicted here that uh, Brody King would win, but I was wrong as Darby Allen did get the win. Uh, I should have saw that coming. I didn't think about the fact that Darby's won all of his uh, matches and plus. He's a really tough man. I, I'm okay with it. I'm just saying. I think Brody King should have won that. But I'm also okay with Darby Allen winning it. So John Moxley cuts a promo. And uh, talks about uh, how the interim thing on the name of the interim title being a joke because of the F. And then he says that there's the FTW belt. Call, and then calls the interim the title the FYI title. Basically. Uh, then back from, they will go to commercial. Chris Jericho talks as well, back from commercial. Talks about how he's going to take back what is rightfully his um, to be the Lionheart. Um, and then... <laughs> And then we had uh, the trios tournament bracket at matches happening. I mean, the first round matches are here already. Uh, we have first matchup uh, Andrade, El Idolo, Roosh, and Dragon Lee versus the Young Bucks and uh, a mystery partner. Uh, we have the Death Triangle taking on Will Ospreay and Ozzy Open. And we have House of Black taking on the Dark Order. And we also have the Trustbusters taking on the Best Friends. And then we had our Tornado Tag Team matchup. Uh, La Faction and Gobernable uh, defeated the Lucha Brothers. Um, which I saw coming. I think I predicted La Foxion was going to win. But I also was thinking the Lucha Brothers would win on this. So I did predict that La Foxion did win, would win. Uh, and they did. So... This was a nice matchup, and it's a, it was a good way to put on uh, a good tor tornado tag matchup. Uh, this was set to be a Lucha Rules match, and they did try to rip off the mask of Penta, and they uh, tied the strap of the mask onto the rope. This could be arguable about whether this should have been in its qualification or not, but uh, Penta uh, got out. Uh, they were pinning Ray Fenix, and Penta uh, came over to save his brother. Uh, this is debatable whether or not uh, this was this should have been in disqualification, but uh, I'm gonna go on. Uh, on the heels side here and say that this is this is not a DQ. Mm. 
The Young Bucks uh, had a Cutler cam. They went and ran into the Dark Order and Hangman backstage. The Bucks then saved Paige for saving them and started talking about how he misses Hangman. And Matt did ask Paige to be their partner, but Paige said that he just can't and that the Dark Order for them and Paige feels like he should have their back and that he'll be in their corner. So this kind of, this is kind of a little bit of foreshadowing here. Well, not really foreshadowing, more like a, a teaser, um, to, to say the least. Because there's been lots of rumors going around that Kenny Omega is returning. And it seems Kenny might, in fact, be returning next week. Uh, it is very possible, too. Jungle Boy then made an entrance and joined commentary. Luchasaurus had a match. Uh, he defeated Anthony Henry in a really easy squash match. Uh, after, though, Christian started to talk on the video board. Well, the Titan Tron. Uh, then Jungle Boy immediately sprinted toward and took him out. Um, that, that's really all that happened there. Miro then later on talked about his temptations about the House of Black. Julia Hart walked up. Miro, though, dismissed her, saying his path is to the House of Black. So, I like I like what's happening here within Miro and the House of Black, uh, but and also something that I thought was very interesting is that Miro walked into the light for the first time ever within all of these promos that he's been doing. Uh, ever since he became the Redeemer and he started doing these promos, he's always been in the dark, but then it seems he's finally seen the light. And, and he walks right up to it at the very end. I thought that was very interesting. And this is, this could be, this could lead to something, uh, something huge that is happening too. Powerhouse Obbs was asked backstage about being done with Ricky Starks. Before he could answer though, QT Marshall and the factory uh, walked up and said they'd finish Starks and... Uh, Hobbs told QT not to let his problem become Hobbs's. Uh, Jay Lethal, Sanjay Dutt, and Satnam Singh walked out. Uh, they talked about Satnam w slamming Wardlow. Uh, Lethal gave Wardlow an offer. Either defend or they'll just come take it. Wardlow came out and said he could ha he would have a shot. But tonight, he's uh, destroying all three of them. He stormed to the ring, but FTR came out and returned. Uh, they And they hit the big rig. Um, and then they gave a huge hug. It seems uh, the fr they're friends once again uh, since the Pinnacle happened and FTR and Wardlow were members of the Pinnacle. And now they've turned face... So it, it, it's cool to see that they're hugging that they hugged each other there though. Um 2.0 Daniel Garcia and Anna JAS were backstage uh, and they said Jericho would win and Garcia called out Brian Danielson and called himself the Dragon Slayer and then Jay found Rebel walking by and accused her of not thinking Garcia's the Dragon Slayer so she choked her out. And then Ricky Starks had a singles matchup against Aaron Solo. Uh, I predicted here that Ricky Starks would win, and so he did. After the match, though, Nick Camarado attacked Starks. Um, but Starks able to fight him off momentarily. He was overwhelmed by the two-on-one attack, but avoided a chair shot and ran up the ramp to escape from the factory. Uh, the camera cut to backstage with Hobbs smashing a TV backstage. He was upset. The Gun Club was backstage. Billy betray berated my bad. Berated his sons for losing 
the dumpster match. Uh, Stokely walked up and started to talk. Billy cut him off and sent him packing. Dan Housen then walked up and said he'd see them on Friday. <laughs> the best friends were interrupted by the trust busters. And Ari Davari said Orange w had been ignoring his text to join him, but Orange did dismiss him. So uh, now on Rampage, uh, Orange Cassidy takes on Ari Davari in singles action. Uh, the TBS title matchup uh, took place. Jade Cargill, the champion, uh, took on Madison Rain. Uh, I predicted here that Jade would win, and she did. It did last longer, though, than I thought it would. Um, after the match, uh, Athena attacked Jade, but Kiera Hogan pulled her to safety, and Athena posed with the TBS title. Um, I think this is a, um, a, a preview for an Athena versus Jade Cargill for the TBS championship. Athena event, it does take her down, it, though. The Thunderstorm were backstage uh, with Chris Statlander being injured again. Uh, Storm is now the top contender, and uh, Rosa accepted the circumstances, and Storm would I mean, said her ultimate goal is to be the women's world champion. Um, on Rampage... Uh, we've got the Gun Club versus uh, Bearhausen, also known as Danhausen and Eric Redbeard, which is very surprising to see Eric Redbeard back. Um, Parker Boudreaux taking on Sonny Kiss. Uh, first time in a long time we're seeing Sonny on TV. And then we have the AAA World Mixed Tag Team Championships on the line as Sammy Guevara and quote-unquote Ty Mello We'll take on Dante Martin and Sky Blue. Also, the matchups that were announced for next week on Dynamite, uh, the Trios Championship Tournament match, the Andrade El Idolo, Roosh, and Dragon Lee taking on the Young Bucks and their mystery partner. Uh, Tony Storm goes one-on-one -on -one with the returning Kylan King. Um, and there's a best two out of three falls matchup between uh, the re with the rematch of Brian Danielson and Daniel Garcia. And then finally, we have the interim AEW World title match. John Moxley, the champion, went one-on-one -on -one with Chris Jericho. I predicted here Jericho would win. Uh, I was really hoping he did would, but I was wrong. Moxley did. This is completely fine, though, um, as after the match... Um, Sammy Guevara and Jake Hager ran out. They attacked Moxley, leading to BCC, uh, saving them, I mean, saving him. Then 2.0 and Daniel Garcia ran out. Uh, but then CM Punk, out of all people, made his return. And I, and I believe this is a coincidence. Uh, there are two things that I believe is a coincidence. But number one, um... The fact that he returned uh, two years, not two years, two days before his one-year anniversary of making his AEW debut. And the fact that he made his debut near, in, in his hometown and that he's returning nearby his hometown. I think both of these are just uh, coincidences, but uh, I don't know. It's really hard to tell. Um. It was nice to see CM Punk come back. Um, but dude, does he got bags underneath his eyes? He does not look good. But hopefully hopefully his AEW World Title run won't last too long. Uh if he even wins the unification match with John Moxley or whoever is interim world champion by the time they fight, which I believe is going to be John. Like I I really felt that Jericho uh, would, uh, and maybe two or three others could dethrone John Moxley currently. Like, legitimately, I think they could dethrone him. Uh, there's not many that could d dethrone him, in my opinion. And the fact that he hasn't, he doesn't have much losses on his record either. There's not, there's that too. 
But uh, there you go, guys. That's it for Dynamite results. Uh, let's go to Rampage predictions after this. Hello guys, welcome back to TPW, Talking for Wrestling here. Um, this is now time for the AEW Rampage predictions. Um, we've got a bunch of uh, people speaking. We also have some matchups taking place. Um, first of all, Brian Danielson will be returning uh, after his matchup with Daniel Garcia last week, I believe. Or was it two weeks ago? I don't know. But he'll be returning to Rampage, and he'll speak about Daniel Garcia, most likely. Hook will speak, um, even though I don't think he's actually gonna, or if he does, he's not gonna say much. Um, and then we got um, Swerve in our glory speaking as well. So there's a lot of people speaking on AEW Rampage this time around. Um, but we got some matches too. We've got, first of all, we've got the Gun Club taking on Bearhausen, also Dan Housen and Eric Redbeard, which I thought was very surprising. I, I did not think Eric Redbeard would be returning to AEW so soon, but here we are. But, I mean, Dan Housen is getting matchups with literally everyone, it seems, lately. Not that that's a bad thing, I'm just saying. They had a, they had a matchup with... He had a matchup with FTR. He had a matchup with... Uh, they, he had Hookhausen for a little bit. And, and now it seems Bearhausen is happening. I Listen, I I don't know what's happening here, but... I mean, Dan Housen's also ta tagged with the best friends, I believe. No, he has not. Never mind. It is weird, but it is. But it's also whatever. Dan Housen's got a lot of friends. Come on now, live, love, love that Dan Housen. Come on now. But, but in all seriousness, though, I predict Bear Housen's gonna win this. Uh, I, there's, like. In my opinion, there's zero chance Gun Club is beating the giant Eric Redbeard. Uh, it, it, the only way I say Gun Club wins this is if they defeat Dan Housen. If Eric Redbeard it gets in that ring, there is zero chance that Gun Club is going to take down Eric. There's just no way. And then we have Parker Boudreaux going one-on-one -on -one with Sonny Kiss. Uh... Like I said earlier, Sonny uh, is go coming back to television from a, lo a lo long time. It's been a really long time since we've seen Sonny on TV. Uh, this is probably going to be a squash match. Uh, Parker beats Sonny Kiss. Um, there's been a, a tease here about Sonny possibly joining the Trustbusters too, and I, I don't think any. I don't think that'll hurt Sonny at all, as long as it doesn't become a super long thing. Like, do it for, like, maybe uh, three months or something. But I... I it, it, it could work out. It could work out with Sonny joining the Trustbusters. Uh, and we have Orange Cassidy taking on Ari Daivari. Um, and I think Orange Cassidy will win here. Uh... Just because he's he's too much of a big star right now. Plus, Ari Daivari needs to get some losses to uh, build himself up. Um, and the Trustbusters, they're doing well where they are right now. Um, I, I think getting a win would help Ari, but it would hurt Orange Cassidy. But with Ari Daivari losing, it would help Ari, but it would also... It would also would not hurt Orange Cassidy. Would it help Orange Cassidy? Mm, not really. But would it hurt him? Absolutely not. There's no, there's, there's like no, it wouldn't hurt. 
orange if he got the victory, but it necessarily wouldn't help him either. He'd probably just stay where he is. But Ari Daivari needs to get some matchups, take some losses before he starts becoming the big star or the a, a really important wrestler like he is right now. And then we have the AAA Mixed Tag Team Championships on the line. Sammy Guevara and Ty Mello, quote-unquote, takes on Dante Martin and Sky Blue. Uh, Sammy Guevara and Ty win this. Uh, Dante Martin and Sky Blue, I'm sorry, but you guys are not going to win this. Um, Sammy and Ty are just, they're on their own league here right now. Plus, they they still need to create heat for the from the fans that legitimately don't like their relationship. I've just been meh about it, but ever since they started going on TV and being being like they would in the sports entertainment company, uh, I just felt it just felt blank. There, it, it feels like they're trying to be something that they sh- they shouldn't have to try to be. That's all I'm saying. But I I. I get why this is happening. I get why they're doing it. It's it's funny and it works for them. Uh, it's a great way to create some heat. I get it. I just don't think it works out well for me. Uh, whenever I see them two together, I wanna I wanna stop watching. I I don't want to watch anymore. And I know there probably are gonna be some of you like. Oh, but they're heels. You're supposed to not like them. But I mean, like they're not good heels. In my opinion. I just don't think it works for me. It doesn't work for me. This whole, the sports entertainer thing. I'm okay with. And that works for me. It's just the relationship. The on screen relationship. That doesn't work for me. But thank you guys. Once again. Uh, This is the AEW Rampage predictions. Coming up after this, Impact Wrestling predictions. Hello guys, welcome back. This is TPW Talking Pro Wrestling. And now it's time for the Impact Wrestling predictions. Um... We've got uh, Emergence coming by this Friday, um, so I will, I will most like, I will most definitely uh, do the Emergence predictions, but that'll be on a separate video. Uh, I don't want to make this episode too long. Uh, this episode's already getting gonna get long enough as it is. So I'll do that on an, an, an a separate episode. So you guys are lucky. You're getting two different episodes tonight. Tonight. Um. First of all, we've got uh, Carl Anderson taking on Kenny King. Uh, it's it's interesting seeing Kenny on Impact. Uh. But he was on Impact uh, recently, but not in a matchup. Uh, but he's a former Ring of Honor guy. And it's just interesting to see that he's on Impact. I, I mean, good for him. Impact honestly needs the big stars like Kenny King. Uh, I just think it's weird. That's all. And it, But it works for Impact. Because uh, Impact's doing a good job where they are currently. And what... And, Adding more people to the roster like Kenny King will help them in the long run. That's all I'm saying. Um, Emergence will play host to a high-stakes showdown between Honor No More and Bullet Club, where if Honor No More loses, they must disband. But first, Honor No More's Kenny King will take on Bullet Club's Carl Anderson in singles action. That changes everything. Never mind. 
this matchup is still part of the rivalry between the Honor No More and the uh, Bullet Club rivalry. Should I should I should I should I give the predict should I give the bet to Carl or should I give the bet to Kenny? Hmm. I think I give this one to Kenny King. But we'll see what happens here. But but without any other things, let's go next to some X division matches I mean, and, and, and X division action as Speedball Mike Bailey takes on Rocky Romero. Um, th- this is a X division title match. Um, since winning the X division championship at Slammiversary, Mike Bailey has defended his title against any and all challengers. Stepping up to speedball this Thursday will be none other than New Japan Pro Wrestling's Rocky Romero. But whoever is victorious in this title clash must defend the gold just 24 hours later at Emergence. Waiting in the wings will be Jack Evans, who is making his highly anticipated return to Impact Wrestling. Come on, guys. We all know Mike Bailey's going to win this. Uh, uh, I would love to see Rocky Romero become the X Division champion. However, I just don't think it's going to work out for him. I mean, I know he's working under New Japan, and he's in the United States right now. But honestly, I think Rocky Romero could benefit more even though I know it's not going to happen in a, ev- like ever, well, I could I shouldn't say ever. Pro wrestling's pro wrestling is very unpredictable, but I, I it my it will be a long time. But I think Rocky Romero would more benefit with the AEW's All Atlantic title. That's where I feel a uh, it feel within this. I do think he'd be a good X division champion. I just don't think it's going to happen here. Uh, against Speedball. And next, we've got some knockout action as Mia Yim takes on uh, AEW's coach, Madison Rain. Um, as Mia Yim prepares to challenge uh, the knockout's world champion, Jordan Grace, at Emergence, she must first get through former multi time knockout's world champion and AE- current AEW coach. Madison Rain this Thursday. Following a look back at Mia Yim's prior knockouts world title win in a match involving Madison, their rivalry has reignited when Impact official Gail Kim made a matchup between the two. Will Mia build momentum en route to her golden opportunity, or will Madison Rain play spoiler just one night away from emergence? Here's the thing. No. Absolutely not in any way is Mia Yim losing. She needs to build momentum for her matchup against Jordan Grace. And plus, I will will say this again. Madison Rain is doing great where she is. Um, I don't think... I don't think getting this victory so untimingly, I guess the word is, I don't think that would help at all. It would definitely hurt Mia Yim. And we all know that's not going to happen. Mia Yim's going to get the victory. That's all I have to say. And we've got uh, more singles action. I'm... Guessing this is X Division as well, but before Kushida teams up with Chris Sabin to battle Violent by Design at Emergence, momentum is up for grabs when Kushida and Diener go one on one this Thursday. 
Eric Young made himself very clear when giving orders to Joe Deering and Diener. He wants the Motor City Machine Guns and Kushida gone from Impact Wrestling. Will Diener take the first step towards fulfilling Young's wishes? Or will Kushida prove why he's one of the top stars in New Japan Pro Wrestling? This, this is interesting. It really is. Either way, either way, whoever wins. I, I've, I have no idea. I have no idea. Cause, cause in one way with Kushida getting the victory, This proves even further why he's the best. It proves why, I mean, it it, it gives him more momentum for his matchup at Emergence. But if Diener wins this, it gives him a chance to shine. And it makes Eric Young satisfied. I'm going to go with the, I'm going to go with this here and give Kushida the prediction here. I cannot wait for emergence. I cannot wait. Killer Kelly will be making her in-ring debut. Yeah. Killer Kelly put the entire knockouts division on notice when she arrived in Impact Wrestling just two weeks ago. Taking out two young athletes from OVW in the process. Now... Uh, killer Kelly is set to make her impact in ring debut this Thursday. Can anyone withstand the wrath of Killer Kelly? And I say as of this moment, no. Nobody can. Okay, maybe except the world, the knockouts world champion. That might be the only thing, though. And we got a contract signing taking place as well. Uh, between Josh Alexander and Alex Shelley. Just 24 hours before they collide for the Impact World title at Emergent, the reigning Impact World title, I mean world champion, my bad, Josh Alexander and the number one contender, Alex Shelley, will sign the contract for their blockbuster Mm -hmm. match. While Alexander plans Mm -hmm. on continuing his trend-setting reign, Alex looks to become the Impact World Champion for the very first time in his first ever Impact World title opportunity. Who will have the last laugh when Alexander and Shelly sign on the dotted line this Thursday? Contract signing, they speak, possibly brawl. I'm not sure on this one though. That's it. That's the end. I'm very excited for the Impact World, I mean, the Impact World title match between these two. But come on, we all know who's going to win. And it seems very obvious, too. But it is, a, it is cool to see that Alex Shelley is getting his first ever world title opportunity. It's really cool to see that. It, it really is. It really is. But there you go, guys. That is it for Impact Wrestling predictions. Thank you all for watching and uh, Emergence predictions is later today as well. Um, Emergence results will be taking place on Saturday as well. And there will also be Rampage results on that exact episode. And I think we'll do impact results as well. Mm. Yeah, that that seems fair. Okay, thank you all for watching. Uh, See you guys on the next episode. Good night, everybody.